Well, good evening and welcome to this celebration of Church at Home at Home for the great feast, the Christmas feast of the Epiphany of our Lord. Uh, Father Ed Estock here. Father Joshua Trefney here. We're coming to you from uh, Priest House uh, in front of the Christmas tree in the fireplace. And uh, we are celebrating this continuing Christmas season at home and uh, hoping that uh, you and your loved ones are blessed. Uh, homes and home blessings are a central piece of our tradition. And so, uh, as you all know, at the masses this coming weekend, we'll be blessing uh, chalk. And in your Christmas at home prayer package, you have already received a piece of blessed chalk and in the church Christmas at Home uh, mailer uh, prayer manual, you have the instructions and the prayers uh, for blessing your home. So uh, our blessings and our best wishes from our home uh, to your home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a blessed new year. So we are, uh, as part of this feast, You and if you've done home blessings before, you uh, see that we put the letters CMB between the, na the numbers of the calendar year. And that those letters come from the names of the three kings who we celebrate today on this Feast of the Epiphany. Okay. So we are, uh, in honor of those three kings, we're talking a little bit about the encounter that they had with the Holy Family, with the person of Jesus, with, um, with God, and uh, this encounter that came about because they couldn't stop searching. Right. So we call them the three kings. Uh, the Bible calls them the Magi from the east, which is probably kings. Uh, we get the, our word magician from the word Magi in the Bible. Um, they probably are best described in the word that uh, Father Joshua used is uh, seekers, they're astronomers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They were kind of spiritual, um, religious people, pagan. They were not of Israel and they obviously were not Christian. Uh, and so uh, they stand as a representation in our Christian uh, dispensation as all the nations. So all those other people who are not of Israel and are not of uh, the Christian uh, community, uh, they are all the nations. So we would sing the responsorial psalm as all the nations will praise, you know, uh, will praise the Lord. Uh, so this universal um, acknowledgement of the integration of God, humanity, and divinity in Christ Jesus in this Christmas time. Uh, and uh, so the acknowledgement of all the nations, the peoples of the world, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he is the King of uh, the nations, mm -hmm. you know, Lord of Lords and King if, of Kings. Yeah, and if you think back, we called him uh, king of the universe right before we started the Advent season. Right. So uh, this universality of Jesus's lordship and kingship over everything. And so these magi, these kings, they come and they acknowledge Jesus and they encounter him as, as a child and they find uh, him, you know, in mean estates, these, uh, you know, po impoverished kind of situation. And um, and yet they recognize something incredible about him. Uh, and so they gift him with these, these gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, which are, you know, they all have their symbolic representations and ideas, but uh, they are, if nothing else, uh, gifts of great wealth uh, and gifts of, that would have been a sacrifice even for someone who had great wealth to give to someone else. Right. So. And interestingly, so we call this feast, we don't call the, uh, the three kings in Spain. When I was a student in Spain, they had the uh, celebration of Los Tres Reyes, the three kings. Uh, we don't call the Epiphany the three kings. We call the Epiphany the Epiphany. And so it's kind of an odd flip here. We have these seekers from the east 
uh, that have come looking for God, and we celebrate the fact that they have found God. Mm -hmm. But the real twist on this thing is the word uh, epiphany means the uh, universal appearance or manifestation of God. So this really isn't about the Magi finding Jesus. It's about God revealing himself yeah. to the world mm -hmm. and, and to the nations in uh, Jesus. Yeah. So epiphany means uh, universal show or image or manifestation. And so, uh, so this is kind of a weird twist. We're talking about the fact that uh, you don't ever find what you're not looking for. Right. If that makes any sense, it's one of those koans or something, you know. Yeah, um, yeah we can, <clears throat> you know, if all that we look for and all that we ever talk about is the difficulties in life, the mm -hmm. pain that we're, you know, focusing on, the, you know, experience of suffering that we've endured, whatever, if that's the only thing that we focus on, that's the only thing that we ever find. And it's not, I mean, I'm not trying to say it's some head game or some kind of like magical psychological tool, whatever, no. And it's not just thinking positively. The reality is that if we're not looking for God, we're not gonna find him. Uh, he's trying to show himself to us all the time. He has committed this great epiphany, this revelation of who he is in the person of Jesus. And he has shown the world who he is and what he does. And if we don't take the time to look at that, to look at what Jesus does and how he acts and how God behaves, then we're never going to see the traces of it in the right. world. And so that's the beauty of this feast, the epiphany, because we're seeing the magi who see only the world. They don't have any revelation. They don't have anything to look at other than the world. And still they seek beyond and they find Jesus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that we might know from the very beginning, God was manifesting himself to us in everything that he created. Mm -hmm. and of course, in the crown jewel of his creation was the human person. Mm -hmm. And so our faith teaches us that uh, it is reasonable that uh, human beings can find and see and know God in creation. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, that's all we have, yeah. to be honest with you. We have revelation in faith, but we have from the very beginning had uh, the creation, which of course God created in his image and likeness, and he created it to be good, mm -hmm. so that anyone who was uh, had the courage. You know, I was thinking of this today uh, about uh, the suffering mm -hmm. uh, and what uh, faith takes, especially in the face of suffering, is it takes courage mm -hmm. to see God in what the world might tell you is empty. the absence of God, yeah. is empty. And that's what our, our gift of our faith is. Mm -hmm. um, so, and uh, so the, like yeah. this, this uh, seeking in the world, this looking beyond the world, all of this stuff that's driven by courage and, and fulfilled faith. in faith leads to encounter. Right. That's the, that is the pinnacle of what this epiphany is about. It is an encounter with Jesus. Right. And so if we're looking, if we're searching and seeking, and, and we will find, and we find Jesus, right. and that changes everything in right. our lives. Yeah, so let's go back to the book of Genesis and the Garden of Eden, right? Uh, the whole creation story is the encounter with God and humanity, this mm -hmm. communion, this unity. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have the sin of our parents. And what was the experience? And what was the effect of sin is that all of a sudden, God comes in the afternoon, as always, to dwell in communion with uh, humanity, and God cries out, where are you? Suddenly, God cannot find humanity. And so then the man answers, oh, well, I hid myself. Mm -hmm. So in sin, we see the 
absolute opposite of the epiphany and mm -hmm. of this encounter. So we see that in sin, we are not looking and finding God where God is. We are, in, in a sense, hiding from where God is. And we are, uh, because we recognize that we are naked and that we have separated ourselves from God. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, so from the very first book of the Bible to the very last book of the Bible and from everything in between, we have uh, this call to celebrate the encounter of life from God mm -hmm. because that's what faith is. That's what our a good God in creation is providing. So uh, the challenge for us in the world today is to uh, either hide from the manifestation of God mm -hmm. or to uh, have the courage to insist on the encounter with God even when our eyes are telling us that uh, God is absent. Yeah. Or even when our yeah. hearts are um, afraid yeah. because of, of guilt or shame or or yeah, just right. uh, like anything, you know, like because sin, sin drives us to that state of turning away. It drives us to, to hide to, to that, mm -hmm. that guilt. And so there is a desire in us sometimes to, to not see God because it would make us see ourselves uh, for the things that we have done. Uh, but faith gives us the courage and strength right. to drive through that, to seek God even in the midst of sin, which is ultimately uh, what, what we all have to do. Um, you know where I uh, see this, and I've experienced this myself as a, um, well, a publicly religious person and, mm -hmm. and a man of faith, uh, questionable sometimes, I think. Uh, but uh, when there is great tragedy, when a young person dies, when mm -hmm. uh, you know an infant dies, uh, when a young uh, parent is struck with terrible cancer and is dying, uh, it's in those moments where I sometimes cower in fear to announce in that situation that God is with us. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm it's saying difficult. about the, it's the really courage, difficult. because. I'm waiting for people to say, oh, really? You know, th because there is a lot of conviction that if God was loving, if God is, if God is good, he would not allow this thing to happen. I mean, we've all been there. And for someone like me to stand in the midst of that and have the courage to say, I just want to say something, God is here and God is with you and God is good. That is, that's the courage that I'm talking about as far as faith and uh, to, to announce the encounter with God who is manifesting himself right here, right now, yeah. as we are. And boy, uh, so yes, in our brokenheart is And, broken and, sin, and yeah. speaking into that same experience as, as a priest and speaking into those uh, those dark times of grief and mm -hmm. pain uh, that we experience mm -hmm. as human okay. beings. Like what I have seen is that when we step out in courage, in faith to, to encourage that encounter, to, to show that encounter, uh, what we have seen is that God shows up, mm -hmm. you know, and people Not experience <laughs> him and he is in, they, that encounter happens and, and yeah. the people who are in that time of grief and suffering, uh, they experience healing and, right. and new faith and they experience uh, right. God in right. that moment. And so uh, it is all of our jobs, not just, not just in those times of grief, but in any time of suffering or pain, whether it's this time of isolation or uh, someone who's dealing with depression or anxiety or someone who is suffering a trauma or a loss in their life, whatever it is, when we, not just the two of us, but we as a community can speak encounter into that, it changes right. everything for that person. Right. You know, this is tough for us as Catholics, uh, I think because of, the, for one, an, an additional reason, it's because of our sacramental belief and our sacramental uh, conviction. What I mean is that sometimes we can get the sense that guys like us, priests, can make Jesus appear mm. 
in the Eucharist, for example. So that in celebrating a sacrament, what I am doing, I am making God present where God wasn't present before. So, you know, we have this when Jesus is in the tabernacle or Jesus is in the monstrous other thing. You know, people, oh, well, Jesus is here. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. So, but our conviction about the sacramental presence cannot be mistaken for the fact that when the sacrament is not there, that God is not with us, mm -hmm. that Jesus, that we're creating something new. Right. So, yeah. so our, uh, the epiphany spirituality is that no, our God is coming after us and is present now and revealing himself in this moment as we are, where yeah. we are, yeah. and that we have the opportunity in faith to acknowledge it, uh, to announce it, to point to it out, it. To, to seek it, and to make it uh, more visible, mm -hmm. you know, to make it shine mm -hmm. uh, like the radiance of the star, you know. So, um, yeah. Anyway. So this week, let's try yeah. to reveal Jesus in, a, in right. a new way. Let's call him out. Let's point him out. Let's point him out. Let's encourage the encounter so that all of us who are seeking him will find him together. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for joining us, uh, yeah. and we're uh, still wishing you a Merry Christmas. Yeah. God, God bless, bless you Merry all. Merry Christmas.